Hello guys, and welcome to sketchbook tour number five! I know, it took me long enough. Uh, well, actually it only took me about a month or so. Um, I've been getting a surprisingly high amount of views on my sketchbook tour videos, which I did not expect. I post them just for my own personal use and fun, and I think like, well, if someone comes across it, then they come across it. I'm not too proud of things that I draw, so I just post stuff for my own backlog of things, basically. But we're on sketchbook tour number five. People seem to be enjoying it. Um, this sketchbook was from August to November 11th, 2019, so we're slowly catching up. I've got one more sketchbook left to record, which is actually technically my current one, but it's pretty much finished. Um, it's been taking me a long time to do art recently, because of certain things, but anyway, let's get started. So on the front cover, we have my favourite dice places. Uh, Valkyrie RPG, which is the top one, and then Beholder's Gaze, which is the big old circular sticker right here. Absolutely brilliant places to buy dice from. Just had to cut that out because I accidentally showed my phone number. Um, I don't know about other places because I don't like import fees. Uh, I've got some stickers on the front cover, so we've got some Merlin stickers of King Arthur and two knights, um, and then Beholder's Gaze stickers. And this one is the Good vs. Evil sticker, which I got with my set of uh, Slasher Fish dice, which is a very pretty dice set. Okay, right, first page, which is a double page spread, because I thought I'm going to do an interesting intro to the sketchbook, and then it ended up looking like a six-year-old drew it. So, started on the 1st of August, 2019. Um, so we've got a, uh, just a painting of Thorant or a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, which I've always wanted to draw but I've never been very good at. Uh, this plush elephant called Snuffles that I uh, bought and I just, I don't know. I don't know, okay, I don't understand why I did this first page. It gets better as we go along. I'm also going to try and not go through everything in too much detail because uh, there is a, a lot of pages in a moleskin. Okay. So... This page is full of Arakokra drawings, or Kenkus, either one. Um, I wanted to improve with my drawing because this is my character, her name is Babel, she's my D&D character, and I just wanted to improve her drawing birds so I could draw her more. So this is a page referencing loads of birds and making Arakokras and stuff. This page has some Caduceus fan art, my man, soft fuzzy cowboy, yes, we stan. Um, and some expression studies and whatever this girl is. I don't know. Uh, I like to stick stickers around the pages just to make it a little bit more interesting than just artwork on the pages. So you'll see a lot of stickers around. And I thought that the beetle staff and unicorn stickers would be perfect for this Caduceus clay page. <laughs> um, oh, we've got more Caduceus. Of course we do. When do we not have fan art <laughs> of Caduceus? So yeah, he, I like this one a lot more than the previous two, but yeah, we stand. Um, I also tried doing these sort of simplistic flowers, which I forgot that I've done those because I was learning them to try and incorporate them in my sketchbook pages and then was like, oh, I've forgotten about this completely. Uh, there's also Neela fan art because Neela was great. Sumily is amazing. Uh, more art of my character Babel. A six minute anatomy study sketch because I'm in this discord called the self-employed artist discord it's pretty big uh, there's over a couple thousand people on there and there's like a shared study channel where someone called Anne posts a bunch of reference photos and you have the week to draw them and it's basically just studying so that was one of the photos and then Babel on this page and some otter stickers because otters are the greatest Okay, this page, or double page, is when I was designing my new D&D character. Um, I had an idea in mind, I wanted him to be a high elf, or just an elf in general, but uh, I needed to change it to high elf when I was doing his stats, and yeah, so I was just designing the, like, the bust shots, and then I was certain that I liked that look, so then I decided to design the outfit based on those bust shots, and he is an arcane trickster, because that is the class that I needed for a party of two, because they're pretty all-round good. 
and then I decided to trace over it onto lined paper and paint it because I didn't want to mess up the previous drawing. I just needed to test out colours uh, and then I designed this furbolg character. This is a minotaur that I made for my D&D campaign that I was going to run and then never did. His name is, oh gosh, Gunya, Gunya Greatheart. Uh, this is a bunch of random blabber that we will just skip over. Okay, this is a, another drawing of my new D&D character, whose name is Corbo, by the way, I forgot to say that. Uh, just a little pose idea of Babel hugging onto the legs of his, her adopted father. Um, over this side I painted a little, I think it's a torch bug, I'm not entirely sure, I've forgotten what I googled. And a stag beetle and another one, I don't know. I don't know, it was just a weird page full of like bugs and fungi and space people. Another Corbo drawing, so basically on this day, which is the 15th of, why did I say the 5th? 15th of the 5th? It, it's meant to say the 8th. Uh, 15th of August, I was getting my results for my A-levels, uh, and I stayed up until 7am to get them, and yeah, they didn't turn out great, I got very, very bad grades, please revise and do work in college, because you only get one chance. Uh, I drew a gobbo, and some shirt designs on this page. Uh, a little chibi babble drawing, just some random sketches. I was going through an art block on this this section of my life, I think. Um, also, I used up my Morgana and Lancelot stickers. I don't know why I did that. Okay, this double page is a pose slash anatomy study, sort of. I like to go on Pinterest and take photos and then draw them in my sketchbook. So these were in pencil and then I used a fine liner pen for these two. Also the same on this page except for that I used a sharpie and that I used a fine liner. Uh, this is Corbo again. A little Merlin sticker. Ah! Um, on these days I was going to Tintagel. Now if you guys don't know about Tintagel, basically in England down in Cornwall, which is in the west, the southwest, there we go, I remember my directions. Um, there is a town called Tintagel, and it's basically all about Arthurian legend, which is my absolute most favourite thing. And we were going on holiday there, finally! I was very excited. Uh, I was bringing my friend Gollum of Time with me, and yeah, I was very excited. So I drew Corbo sleeping against a tree and then some weird thing whilst we were in the ho- it wasn't a hotel, it was like a, a house that we were staying in in Tintagel. What they called? Airbnb I think is where you like rent out people's houses. I've forgotten what it's called. Um, this is Merlin's cave. So yeah, Tintagel is basically all about Arthurian legend. It's where Merlin was in his cave and King Arthur was raised and stuff, like all sorts of stuff happened and I painted landscapes for the first time in my life. So yeah, Merlin's cave, which is amazing, it's very cool. It's just a cave but it's where Merlin took Arthur, um, like hid him away basically. Uh, over this side we went to Padstow for a day so I painted, basically I painted this guy playing his guitar and then I painted uh, the docks, and now it just looks like the guitar playing man is floating in the air above the docks, so yeah, that's good. Um, this point, we were we went onto the cliffs at about 10pm at night, so basically there's a huge section of cliffs where in between them is the beach where Merlin's cave is, so it's like a little cove, and then either side of the cove is two, like, cliffs, and one side has the Tintagel Castle, and the other side is just cliffs. So we went up onto the empty cliff area, and we sat up there with a sheet 
on the ground and we were listening to music and drawing and just relaxing and it was amazing. It was like pitch black and there was these spiders that kept walking around and it was quite scary but also it was amazing. Usually I'm really phobic of bugs but just being in that moment was, it was great. I belong in Tintagel, I think my soul is just attached there. Um, and then the next morning I went Oh, I did that on the cliffs, by the way. I couldn't see what colours I was using, so I just made something really weird. Uh, the next morning, it was raining, which is very sad, and I decided to draw the view out of the window in the living room. And then uh, we went to... It stopped raining, luckily. It didn't last very long. Uh, we went to the crossbow bar and grill, and I drew the shops, which was opposite the place that we were having cream teas and as Tintagel Home Gifts and Celtic Legend, so I painted those buildings. I did a lot of stuff that I usually don't do when I was in Tintagel. I don't do landscapes and I don't do buildings, but... Okay, so we went to... I wish I wrote the name of the bar. I did write it later on, actually. The Wootton's Inn. We went to the Wootton's Inn and we had some food there. It was sort of evening time and I decided to draw this guy who was sat at the bar and I really like it. It's, yeah, I like it. <laughs> um, oh, I got this little frog. We went to, I've forgotten the name of the place, but there's like a town just a couple miles away and it's where the witchcraft museum is. And I got myself a little frog plushie who is actually, is he on my desk? He was on my desk, but I cannot see him. Anyway. Uh, on the 3rd of November, August, nope, September, the 3rd of September we went up to uh, Tintadral Castle and I painted the cave opposite the castle, so that cave is opposite Merlin's cave basically. And then we went to, uh, we kept going to this place called the Tintadral Kitchens which is amazing. There's a guy there and his name is Martin and he's really really super kind and very chatty. I got a little dragon from there and I named him Martin after the person who works there, which I feel like might be a bit weird, uh, but he was really nice and he left an impact on me. And they do amazing chocolate hazelnut milkshakes. Oh my goodness. Also, cream teas. It's just great. It's amazing. I love it there. Uh, so I painted the, the sort of bar area. It's not a bar, but I don't know what you call it. It's like the the till but there's loads of cakes and stuff on display um this painting is from we were sat on the rocks in Tintagel like on the shore around here on this painting is where Merlin's cave is uh, we were sat on some rocks just oh my gosh it was amazing the wind was blowing in our faces and our hair but it wasn't too strong it was just nice sort of gentle and it was really sunny and warm and it was just peaceful and you could hear people laughing and enjoying themselves and I had the oh hellos uh, playing music and just a bunch of fantasy medieval music playing and I could just sit there and we were listening and just chilling and I painted uh, Tintagel Castle and the bridge that they just built so this is my favorite painting out of all of them so far I feel like I improved a lot in landscapes through the sketchbook but yeah oh my gosh it was such an amazing time I love it there so much uh, and then these were some people that I sketched the pose of when we were at the beach and this is the view of the church which is um, if over here is where the castle is but it's quite far over here and then there's like a church further back into the mainland and it's I decided to paint that from the view of the Wootton's Inn. Um, on the 6th we had to head back home but we stopped on the way to Oakhampton which is where my friend Julia lives. Um, she's been a long time family friend of ours so we went to the tea rooms and had some soup and cream tea and stuff so I sketched a little window and flower pot there. And then on the 7th and 8th I decided to start making my Jester cosplay because I'm finally going to cosplay Jester. Um, well, I was, but Comic-Con is cancelled in May at the moment for some certain reasons, so hopefully we'll do that next year. Um, but yeah, just a lot of cosplay planning, basically. Over here, some pose reference sketches done in five minutes and a drawing of 
uh, Corbo. I think I was not feeling great on that day because I wrote just breathe. <laughs> um, some more studies for poses and I drew that at a weird angle so it went wrong and it, yeah it's not too bad. I don't hate it, I don't really like it. Uh, I used, I've got like this big pen that has multiple colours and I use that on this day. Um, I decided to draw this character called Sandalo de Santal. Basically we were trying to do D&D &D for the first time and Golem of Time was running the game but because um, most of us had never played the game before or were a bit rusty we decided to like start off this game and just make a random character on D&D Beyond and mine came up with a tiefling character who was a sorcerer so Sandalo de Santal everybody I decided to just quickly design him and this is a double page of his design all right uh, and then there he is again <laughs> oh we did not talk about that drawing that is some weird like BDSM stuff that I was testing out uh, some circle head drawings based on Loomis's work and my monster hunter character with Firefly the kitty and Pookie the piggy and oh well we've reached October okay so October this page is the list of all the Inktober prompts Every year of my life I've attempted Inktober and have never managed to finish it, so I was doing my best to give it my best this <laughs> this year, and I got pretty far. So this is, um, I don't know if I'll be able to list all of the prompts because there's quite a lot of them and I don't know if I wrote them on every page. Anyway, Ring and Mindless. We started off pretty weak. <laughs> I used a cat for my first one which is not great and a little like well I say little a huge golem creature which is it's quite good um day three bait day four th freeze this day I use my monster hunter second character day five build I went for the build of a body so a muscular body so I used Owen for that my OC and day six husky so I used my northern elf Aegis with a random husky Day seven, my mum got me some gold ink, so I started incorporating that into my work, and I did Enchanted, which is my character Veronwe using magic and stuff. And day eight is Frail, so I went for sort of the more emotional approach to that. The gold is so shimmery. Uh, day nine and day ten, I think I don't like the drawings too much because the anatomy is quite off, but I like the double page spread look of it. It looks quite aesthetic. Day nine is swing, so I did Aegis. Nope, that's Pan. I did Pan swinging a sword, and day ten is pattern. So I went for this character that I made, who has like a sort of a pattern on his stomach, and then for a lot of different pattern lines. It's not that great. Day 11 is snow, so I did Aegis in the snow with a dead dragon. And day 12 was dragon, which I didn't realise, so I had to draw another dragon, and Aegis is riding that dragon. Day 13 and day 14 is also another double page spread that I like the look of. Uh, day 13 is ash, so I did um, Ferida's home burnt down, and day 14 is overgrown, so I drew Niara waking up after she died. Day, oh, I didn't write down day 15. I thought we were going off to such a good start. Day 15 is legend, so I did a sword and Niara behind it, because that is a part of a legend in my world. Day 16 is wild, so um, that is Monster Hunter screen cap that I found from Monster Hunter. I just grabbed a screen cap and drew that. Uh, day 17 is ornament, so I drew my character Niara feeling like just a pretty ornament plaything because she was in a pre-arranged marriage. Then day 18 is misfit, so I did a rocket in a medieval housing area because it doesn't fit, so it's a misfit. Uh, day 19 was sling, so I drew some random gunslinger. Um, I was losing a lot of steam at this point. <laughs> I was just getting bad art block from drawing an entire ink painting day after day. To be honest, I was getting like drawn out by day 17, uh, <laughs> so it was getting more and more difficult for me to continue. So day 20, which was tread, I was doing a footprint and I just didn't like where I was going, so I gave up. 
well, I didn't really have time to finish it either. So day 21 was treasure. Um, I drew not looking at some treasure, not the brave, but I drew her hand backwards because I'm stupid. So yeah, I don't like that. Day 22 is ghost. So I did Caduceus um, having some ghost coming out of his dead people tea. Although as I was drawing him, I started making him naked. <laughs> My hand does what it wants. I don't pay too much attention mentally when I'm drawing. So I just started drawing and a naked caduceus came out of it. <laughs> I just don't question it. Day 23 was ancient so I drew this um, golem troll thing and I just gave up. Day 23 I gave up. Uh, <laughs> so that is the final day of Inktober. I feel like I did pretty well because before every year of my life I've only managed to get to like day 5 and I've given up. Managing to do 23 almost full days of Inktober, I'm pretty impressed with myself. And then I did a little <laughs> tombstone saying Inktober rip here. Um, 25, yeah the next few days I had just had no energy for drawing so it's all small um, idea sketches and stuff. Um, yeah, nothing much to say there. Day 27 and 28, I... where was I? I was in Hull visiting my family and so I was drawing quite a bit because I don't like interacting that much. Uh, so I did Owen in sort of a modern day atmosphere on his bed and his phone's on charge. I quite like this actually. Uh, and he's got like a little plushy bunny and then this day I drew my character Melchior, sat at a pub, he sort of looks like a casino guy, you know, like one of the really high up gang people, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I also wrote up here, if you would face me, take up arms newly arisen, because Dragon Dogma is amazing. Um, I drew my nan watching the news, and my granddad, except he moved so I couldn't finish it. Just some random drawings, some guy with like pastel rainbow hair. Some weird demon thing and a little goblin creature. And then I drew this girl, random forest girl and one of the bears that are in my world and some random bunny. I don't know what half of these drawings are. Uh, I drew Melchior again. And I also drew Aegis grown up because it's been a while since I made Aegis and he was like really young and in the story he's aged up a bit so I decided to redraw him and he has a little sister, spoilers, so yeah I just, I drew all of that. Um, oh I watched the adjustment bureau on this day which was the 2nd of the 11th 2019, so June, July, August, September, October, November. The 2nd of November I watched the Adjustment Bureau, which I can't actually remember what it's about, so... What was it? <laughs> Why have I forgotten? Oh yeah, it's about like, um, fate and people wanting to be together, but then like there's higher ups who don't want that. Um, I, again, was having art block on this day because I didn't draw much and I drew this monstrosity of a thing I don't know uh, on this day I decided to learn how wings work because I have a winged character she's a comic book character she's called Dark Angel and so I wanted to learn how wings work and I did some like interaction sketches and stuff this is Dark Angel by the way it's not properly her because she doesn't quite look like that but it was the best of what I did at the time with the materials I had, which was watercolour and pencil. Uh, I also decided to start drawing how to train your dragon dragons. So this is a scroll character that I made. And a shock jaw character that I made. Um, oh my gosh, there's a little Moomy and Snuffkin down there, that's so cute. Oh my goodness, okay, um, we'll just, I don't really have much to say for most of these, so we're just gonna skip past most of them. Oh, uh, we're on the final few pages of my sketchbook now, which is where I started drawing different things just messily and quickly so I could get the sketchbook over with, so here's some birds, uh, there's a centaur, here's some pose sketches, more pose sketches, 
and more pose sketches. These are actually good to do, but I just cheated a little bit by doing them at the end of my sketchbook, so I didn't have to draw more to fill up the last pages. I might do that again for the sketchbook, honestly. Um, but yeah, so that is my that is my sketchbook all done. I also have these things in the back pocket, which this is from Valkyrie RPG. It's a little thank you wax stampy card thingy. And this is one of the artists that I liked the work of in Another Green Gallery, or is it Another Green World? I don't remember. Um, which is in Tintagel, so this is a little business card of some of that artwork on. If you want any of the details, there you go. There's a lot of great artists in Another Green World, um, so this was just one business card that I had the confidence to pick up. I felt I didn't really want to pick them up, I felt bad for taking them, but you're allowed to, so I don't know, just anxiety things. Anyway, yeah, so that is my fifth sketchbook. Um, I'm pretty proud of the progress I made with this one. I think it's a lot more improved since sketchbook four. Um, and I did it in October, which is crazy. So I just want to say some last things before I finish. Um, it's just a sketchbook review because I try and do that at the end of every video if I've tried a new sketchbook. And this is a moleskin sketchbook which I have never tried before. I am thoroughly impressed. I thought people raving about moleskin sketchbooks was like, oh, they're just overreacting. This is overrated. It's just going to be a generic sketchbook. That's just expensive. No, it is amazing. It is so much better than the sketchbooks I've tried before. Um, the cover holds up really nicely. It looks like a bit of a mess, but I've had this battered around all over the place and there's only a bit of scuffing and the middle crease because of how flat I have my sketchbook. Um, yeah, it's crazy how good this sketchbook is. Like, the cover's really strong. I carry my sketchbook around everywhere, so that's held up really well. The pages, there's so many pages. This lasts more than a month for me now. The other sketchbooks I've used have only lasted me a month. This took me way longer, so it's good. Um, and it's three times the price, so you're getting three times the length of a... Actually, no, it's only twice the price. You're getting, like, three times the amount of pages, because this took me three months rather than a month, for only twice the price of a cheap sketchbook. So it's, like, £11 or something, which is really cool. Um, this paper is really nice. It's got like a sort of a, a grit to it, so it grabs the pencil so it, it won't smudge, but also it's not like so smooth or so rough that it is uncomfortable. I don't know how to explain it, but like it's just got a perfect texture for me for what I like to do. The pencil doesn't smudge on it. Uh, it holds watercolour really well. It does buckle the page a little bit as you can see, but it's not that bad. And there's so many pages. The colour I like because it's like an off-white so I'm allowed to have white highlights that are visible. I just really like this sketchbook. I think it's absolutely brilliant. It's definitely worth your money. I thought before they were expensive and overrated but they are absolutely brilliant. So much better than the other sketchbooks I've tried. Anyway, now that that's over, thank you guys so much for watching my sketchbook tour. I hope you enjoyed. Um, sketchbook tour number six will be coming out soon. I'm sorry for the wait. Uh, thank you guys so much, and I will see you again soon!